Okay, so hello everybody. Uh, my name's Ian. Uh, I'm a section leader of large carnivals at Paradise Wildlife Park. Uh, and at the moment, we're just going to try and get Kadira, our female jaguar. You might just see her at the bottom there uh, to see if she's going to come out and just climb this uh, tree to the right of the picture there. Her food is on the top. Uh, now, she hasn't got a lot of food today. She is uh, actually on a diet at the moment, so we're trying to trim her down. Um, and she does eat separate to her partner, Kamal. Uh, Kamal is actually in the separation pen to the right of the enclosure at the moment. He's just about to come out for his food. Uh, but they do eat separately. Um, oh, she's just coming to the bottom of the tree. Uh, they do eat separately simply because uh, they will be quite aggressive and possessive over the food. Even though these two absolutely love each other, uh, they're really good together. They spend all of their time together. In fact, the only time we separate them is literally uh, just so they can eat for a few hours and once they finish their food um, they go back together quite happily and usually thin each, each other's bones up. So she's actually looking for a, an easier way up the pole there but she has just realised where it is. Uh, she's going to check the enclosure first just to see uh, if she can uh, find an easier route up but we're trying to exercise her so the pole feeds work really really well. Um, as they're not going to hunt all she goes just building up to it, that's really good. You can just see the strength um, in her muscles there. And she is losing a bit of weight now, which is good. Oh, she knocked a bit off, but effortless really, actually, when you see it. Um, and she's just going to take it into a day shelter there to eat. So I'm going to see if I can just move along a bit of picture of her while she's eating. There we go. Um, so yeah, those pole feeds work really well. It actually uses the same kind of muscles and bone structure uh, as if these guys were bringing down prey. Now they are ambush predators, so uh, what they're actually trying to do uh, is tackle their prey from behind. They don't want to be near the, the front hooves or the teeth of the prey species that they're uh, going after, simply because that is going to uh, be the most dangerous part for them. Obviously the back legs can still kick them, which is dangerous, and people often kind of overlook how, how dangerous it is when predators take down uh, prey species, especially when prey is often, you know, three, four times their own body weight. She weighs about 65, 70 kilo at the moment, uh, but she can take down food easily three or four times her own body weight. Incredibly powerful cat. Um, and it's a risk of injury for them every time they go out hunting. And if they're actually caught on their own somewhere uh, and they do get a kick and an injury uh, from any of their prey species and they can't hunt for a week, you know, they start to get to a dangerous point of maybe kind of starving to death, uh, which is going to cause a lot of problems for them in the wild. They're solitary hunters. Um, these guys don't, don't hunt in groups uh, like prides of lions or packs of dogs or anything. So they rely on everything uh, for themselves. Now, as she's eaten that, um, it won't take a long to get through this. Uh, Jagger is a notorious for virtually eating everything that we give them. She will crunch down the bones as well. Uh, she's actually got some ribs. Uh, today, these are horse ribs. Now, we don't kill horses to feed the cats here uh, at Paradise Wildlife Park. They are um, uh, usually donated or the owners get to decide what they want to do with their horse. The abattoirs then uh, check for disease, check for any drugs that that animal might have had that could affect our cats. Uh, and then we get the food once it's been processed. You might notice it's got a bit of a blue dye on it. That is just a vegetable dye. That's to say that it's not fit for human consumption, that's all. So as we're looking at her nice and close, she's chewing away there. She's nice and relaxed even when we watch him, which is quite good. Um, you can see these beautiful kind of markings on them. This is typical of a jaguar. They've got these kind of four spots uh, that make up what we call these rosette patterns. So these rosettes uh, uh, are their markings that are all over them. And they're usually kind of goldeny brown, but Kadira is actually a little lighter than most jaguars uh, that I've seen before. But then just like us, our genetics come from uh, their parents. Now you do get this black correlation, uh, coloration of jaguars as well. Uh, people often refer to them as panthers, uh, but actually panthers don't really exist. There's no actual species of cat uh, that is a panther. Um, panther is kind of a, comes from the word panthera, which in Latin, uh, the scientific name means big cat, basically. Um, so when you do get these black jaguars, uh, it's actually a dominant gene that produces it. Whereas in with white cats, like leucistic cats, um, with uh, white fur, like uh, white lions uh, or white tigers, this is a recessive gene. So both parents need to carry that gene to have a small chance uh, of passing that element on. 
Whereas with Jaguars, uh, it's actually a dominant gene. So one parent uh, uh, needs to carry that black gene uh, and that gives you a chance of it, it, it coming out in the cubs in the future. Uh, with leopards, so, uh, if you see black leopards in India, uh, this is actually back to a recessive gene again, so both parents must cap it. So it's quite unique in Jaguars, it's a dominant uh, gene there. Now, as I said, this is Kadira uh, eating here. Uh, we have got Kamal, he is eating in the separation pan. I can't quite see him from where I am uh, at the moment. Uh, and he is a bit more protective of his food than she is uh, as well. Uh, they are part of the European breeding program uh, and luckily for us these two actually have produced a cub who actually turned three uh, in April this year. Uh, she actually moved to our sister part, the Big Cat Sanctuary there, uh, and she's actually been paired up with another Jaguar called Neron who is a big black Jaguar who's born in Artist Zoo in Amsterdam. Um, so with a bit of luck when they go on to breed in the future if they get a recommendation uh, to breed uh, we could end up with some black cubs from uh, this generation uh, or this uh, these could be grandparents to some black cubs I suppose uh, which would be really really nice. Um, with the breeding program like I said they're part of the European Endangered Species breeding program and this uh, means we get recommendations to breed. Uh, now with Jaguars generally we only want to breed kind of uh, one set of cubs from each pairing. Uh, that means that we don't want to kind of flood the uh, breeding program with the same genetics from the same cats all the time. Obviously you get half of your genetics from your mum, half from your dad. dad. So uh, to ensure that we're not flooding it, we, we kind of make sure that we're given recommendations based on who's bred before. Uh, it doesn't mean that we won't ever get a recommendation to breed again. Uh, and they were both excellent parents for a first time group uh, as well, which worked really well. Uh, in fact, they, they were so good that we actually managed to get dad uh, Kamal back with his daughter uh, for the last kind of year of their life, which is quite rare. Um, you do get what we call infanticide with big cats and jaguars are notorious for it. And that is where uh, in the wild, if a mum's got some cubs, dad will play no part in rearing them. And if another male came into that area, um, sadly he might try and kill that cub and that will bring the female back into season so he can go and breed. Uh, and as much as it sounds horrible and it, it sounds really uh, nasty and cruel, uh, it is how these guys have survived uh, for millions of years now and it means that there is survival of the fittest if only the strongest genes uh, are being passed on in the world that ensures that you've got uh, the strongest genetic cats that are growing up it means if you've made it to adulthood in the wild you're pretty much the strongest of the strong fittest of the fit now jaguars are uh, the only true big cat that comes from the americas and their stronghold is uh, the amazon basin uh, down in south america there but there are populations uh, outside of that they're also found it up into mexico uh, with at least two or three hundred individuals that we know of there uh, and more recent years there's even been reports of several uh, sightings in arizona uh, in those southern states in america there uh, but there is little known about this population uh, and obviously with the worry of border walls and things like that going up between these countries it means if they are roaming across the borders there um, then there, there might be a problem for that isolated small population there uh, it means that they might be forced into inbreeding which ultimately uh, would cause them to, to disappear sadly in the wild now, it's hard to do conservation work in the wild with jaguars in most of the territory that they're found in. Either these countries are, are very dangerous to go into, uh, there's lots of different uh, problems with cartels and things like that that own areas, uh, and people can't really go out into the jungle uh, and just count these uh, and look after them and do conservation work uh, like we would with other species. So, uh, we kind of do guesstimates on, on how many of these guys are left in the wild. Some of the best numbers uh, you get today are probably around 8 to 12. 12,000 I think it's probably quite optimistic that there's if there's that many left in the world today uh, I think we're probably talking more around uh, maybe you know five to eight thousand uh, and that would be a really really uh, optimistic but some of the areas that these guys live in in the Amazon basin there especially are incredibly remote we don't know so there actually might be more um, than we think but we're kind of from a conservation point of view we always kind of want to uh, look at the least. If, you, if you've got more numbers than you actually end up finding out, uh, you know, that's just an absolute bonus in the world. So you might have been able to just hear a crunch through that rib there. Now ribs aren't the, the strongest of bones, but these guys literally uh, crunch for anything. That's because they've got the strongest jaw pressure, uh, size for size or pound for pound for any cat on the planet. In fact, their uh, crushing power in their jaws 
uh, is around 1800 pounds per square inch of crushing power. Uh, if you take a big lion, big tiger, you're probably talking 15, 1600 pounds per square inch. So even though they're not the size of a, a lion or a tiger, uh, they're incredibly powerful uh, for that size. And I personally, I'd class them as probably the most dangerous cat to work with in captivity. They're incredibly clever. Uh, uh, they cognitive ability is amazing. These guys, uh, we do lots of training with these guys and they work out these issues uh, and work out problems and puzzles very, very quickly, uh, whether it be through brute force or whether it is through uh, just intelligence. So there's a perfect example of her marking there. She's now looking for that little bit of meat that she actually dropped um, as she came down. So we'll just see if she's going to jump down there. Uh, and in fact, the, the jaws are so powerful, you can see how wide uh, their cheeks are there. It's because they've got all this extra muscle power. And in fact, unlike most cats that actually would um, uh, kill their prey through a jugular hold and suffocate their prey, um, these guys will actually uh, kill their prey with a single leap or a single bite. And I believe the word uh, jaguar actually comes from, oh, I can't know if it's an Aztec word or an Inca uh, a word, uh, but the word was agua, which meant to kill with one leap or to kill with one bite. So, um, incredibly powerful, and there we go, she's found that a little bit. Straight back up into a day shelter, and then. Now, if you did see a little wound on her back leg there, uh, don't panic too much, we are aware of that. She's just been over grooming an area there, we're not sure she's got a small <coughs> skin condition. Uh, or what it is, uh, but she's definitely just over grooming it. Now, luckily, she is very well trained, so we have been spraying her uh, to try and deter her from uh, with an antiseptic just to keep it clean, and, uh, and it does help uh, deter her from doing it. And our vet is currently working uh, on, a, on what we're going to do with her, but it's not really causing her too much of a problem uh, apart from she's just licked the fur away on that back leg. There. But uh, luckily, we monitor our cats very closely so that we can always see what's going so what i'm going to do is i'm going to leave you uh, just watching her for a few seconds uh, now during lockdown the cats uh, have been um uh, have been starting to miss some people i think they like watching children running around and it keeps them a bit entertained so we've been trying to do extra enrichment and keep these guys uh, extra stimulated during these times and hopefully all of you guys are, are staying safe uh, at home um, obviously during lockdown we're not making any money at the moment uh, and it does it is what we rely on uh, our income of public coming in to see these beautiful animals uh, to keep us going it probably costs us around three thousand pounds a day to operate this park uh, eat during lockdown and that's when we're on skeleton team so uh, please, please, if you do have any uh, spare money or at least just share the video, helps get some awareness out there. Uh, and hopefully once lockdown uh, is finished, uh, we'll be able to see you all and welcome you all back uh, to Paradise Wildlife Park. Um, please stay safe while you're out there, make sure you're helping each other and looking after people that might be vulnerable. Uh, and like I said, we hope to see you soon. Thank you for watching uh, and take care.